What up, data nerds? In the field of data science, we're constantly working with all these different applications and we're reaching for our mouse or our trackpad in order to select these applications, resize them, move them around. This is time consuming and we can save a lot of time by using shortcuts. Being the nerd that I am, I went and researched how much time we're actually wasting by reaching for our trackpad and our mouse and found that we're wasting about eight working days per year. If you're new here, I'm Luke, and my channel is all about tech and skills for data science. And in this today, we're gonna to be going over shortcuts and applications that I use on a daily basis for my job as a data analyst to increase my productivity. So with that, let's jump right in. For the first portion, let's look at shortcuts that I use to navigate through and select different applications. So let's say I have a example project that I'm trying to bring back up on my computer and I have a few different applications I work with. For this, um, let's say I'm running a Jupyter Notebook with a, it's connected to a CSV file and I'd also like to have a terminal open to control all of this. In order to find apps, we should press uh, Command Spacebar, which launches the Spotlight Search. And in this case, you can then search for different applications. So I use iTerm for my terminal. I can type in iTerm and then press Enter. And from there, it will launch a terminal right within my window. Since we're gonna be launching a specific project for this Jupyter Notebook, I'll go ahead and navigate into the folder real quick. I can see that there's a, a few different files in here that I wanna open up. Um, another shortcut if you can't even see this screen is Command Plus, and usually in any application you can zoom in or zoom out with Command Plus or Command Minus. So I'll just blow that up for you. So I know I want the CSV file open for sure, so I can use the Spotlight Search again by pressing Command Spacebar, typing in the Nuke uh, Demographic Survey, going down to the CSV that I want, and then just pressing enter to uh, launch it and then have it pop up. And then if I wanna cycle between these apps, I can uh, just press the command tab and you can cycle through the different apps. Holding down command shift tab allows you to go backwards. I still need to launch that Jupyter Notebook, so I'll just type that in here to launch it. And now I can uh, select the file itself and launch it in its own window. So now I have all my windows open that I want. Um, I can go through and actually select the different ones. So using command tab, like I said, but let's say like numbers, I'm not gonna be using that that frequently. I can use uh, command M to actually minimize this and store it off to the side until I actually need it. If I don't even want to use an app anymore, I can go through here and, and select the app that I don't want. So say I don't need OneNote anymore, I can press uh, Command Q and it will quit the application completely and it will no longer be up. Some applications I access a lot, so I like to have shortcuts or known shortcuts to access them. So say for example, you wanna access Finder. You can press Command Option Spacebar and it will launch a new Finder window and uh, with this, if I wanted to close it, I just press Command W, similar to any other application, just to close it, but it's still running in the background, you press Command W. And another application that I use a lot is Terminal. So I set up a shortcut manually for this and pressing Control Option Spacebar will bring up uh, the terminal. And the last thing to note on navigating apps is in Windows you have Control Alt Delete in order to shut down a funky app or an app that's not responding. In Mac, it's just as easy to navigate to. It's Command Option Escape and I press these and the force quit applications pops up and I can select which application I want to force quit and actually shut down. Uh, so let's say numbers in this case, I can force quit it and shut it down. So I do need that CSV file open, so I'm gonna open it back up. Uh, the next section we're gonna get into is organizing applications because right now we have a, a few different applications open and maybe I wanna do some sort of split plane to actually see the different things that I'm working with. An application I use for this is Rectangle and it's really great because it's able to actually go in and you can assign or it has different shortcuts assigned for actually tiling and putting in your windows into different uh, selection areas or parts of the window. With the app too, not just with shortcuts, it has that similar to Windows. You can do things where you uh, put it on one side of the screen. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, another uh, screen as well, and I can tile it and, and move it around. So let's say I wanted to maximize this 
uh, Jupyter Notebook to the full screen. I go ahead and uh, select it itself. I can press Control Option Enter and it will maximize it. I can press Control Option Left to go to the left side of the screen, Control Option Right to go to the right side of the screen, uh, bottom and up. And I've just pressed over, so up. And so it's really neat because you can do these things. You can even get it into different thirds of the screen, but I mean, we're working with a 13 inch screen right here already, so not really helpful. So we still have multiple files open that I want access to, and I really don't want it arranged like it is now. I actually want the Jupyter Notebook and the, uh, the Jupyter Notebook and the terminal on one screen, and then the CSV actually on a separate screen that I can maybe swipe to if I need to look at it. So let's, uh, let's actually arrange it like that. So for this, uh, yep, I want the uh, Chrome Notebook on the left, but I want the uh, terminal on the right. So I'll just go ahead and press Control Option and move it to the right-hand side of the screen. And then from there, I'll go and select the uh, Numbers uh, file itself. And if you haven't seen this feature before, the tiling feature, you can go up to it and select either, hey, I want to enter full screen, I want to tile to the left, I want to tile to the right, and I want to do enter full screen itself. And what this does, it provides the method to whenever I press control left or control right, or the actual gestures on your trackpad to swipe left or right with three fingers, I can actually maximize my screen space. When I need to look at the CSV file, I can just cycle over to it and look at it. But um, this requires, once again, using your mouse and trackpad. So I've went in and manually set up uh, different uh, shortcuts to actually tile the methods. The shortcut that I created was Command Control Enter and it brings it back to the main page. But now that I, I can uh, go in, I want to select numbers. Yep, I want to maximize it in its own tile. I can press Command uh, Control Enter. Alternatively, I can uh, return back to its normal view here. Or if I wanted to do to the right tiling, to a, so a half ways, I can press Command Control Right, and then from there select the application that I want it on the uh, left hand side. And then using Control Left or Right arrow, I can scroll back between the two. Now let's get into a tool that data scientists and data analysts use on a regular basis. Um, and most normal people use it as well. Uh, that's gonna be the, the browser itself. I'm gonna be using Google Chrome for this, but these shortcuts are also the same for if you're using like Safari. So let's say I need a, another browser open. I want to maybe take some research from uh, Wikipedia or some research paper, and I want to have it in this dual screen manner. So I can go ahead and launch a new window by pressing Command N, and it will launch a new window open. From there, I want it in the right hand side, so I'll press that Command Option and sorry, Control Option right. So I can go to Google.com if I wanted to, um, and then pop it open. If I wanted a new tab, I would press Command T, and a new tab would actually open up. And then from there, I can once again Google anything that I wanted and it pops right open. If I wanted to go back to the search bar itself, I would press Command L. It would go back into the search bar itself and I can research in what I want to go to. So what is Pi? And it would pop right open. If I wanted to duplicate this tab, I could press Command L. It would select that search bar itself and then from there I would press Command Enter and it would now duplicate the tab itself. So now if I navigate into a page itself and I go to it, what is Pi and how did it originate? Um, if I wanted to go back to the original Google search, I could just press Command back and it would navigate to that page. Command option uh, left and right and that's how you can actually go through and select the different tabs. So if I don't no, no longer need a tab open, I can just press that command W. Let's say I was doing work with the Pythagorean theorem and I needed to put some information about it. So I can navigate to Pythagorean theorem, uh, select down to what I wanna go to. I wanna get it from Wikipedia here. And let's say I wanna put it at the bottom of my notebook itself. But let's say I wanted this paragraph right here. Um, I could go in and uh, select this paragraph right here and then using Command C, I'm going to copy it and then from there I can just paste it right into here by pressing Command V. Uh, similarly, you can use Command C for copy. You can use Command X for cut. 
let's say I wanna get this picture right here and I wanna zoom in on it. I can press that uh, Command Plus to zoom in on it. I'm gonna press Command Shift 4 and it's gonna allow me to screenshot whatever I wanted to screenshot. So in this case, I'm gonna uh, screenshot this square right here. Command Shift 4 puts this uh, copy of this file of the screenshot on your desktop. So if I wanna to go to it, I can press uh, to pull it up in Finder, Command Option Spacebar, navigate to the desktop itself, and yeah, it's right here uh, for this uh, screenshot. Pressing the spacebar, we can actually view it itself. And now I can go ahead and put that uh, image into my Jupyter Notebook by just doing some simple Python code and then putting it in, Command Enter. And yeah, so now it references the images right here on my desktop and it's appearing with that screenshot that I took. And the last one of random shortcuts that I use is Command Control Spacebar. And for this, when you press Command Control Spacebar, uh, different e the emoji selection actually pops up. So you can insert your different emojis uh, as well if you want to in this Jupyter Notebook, or it works even in the browser as well if you're uh, navigating different things. The last application that I'll talk about in Shortcut that I'll talk about is Alfred. And Alfred is a replacement to Spotlight Search. So we did, we're using Command Space to access the Spotlight Search. And instead for this, you press Option Space Bar and Alfred is an application that you can actually download and install on your machine, it's for free. And with this, it does a lot of the same functionality of Spotlight of searching for different files but it does even more. So if I wanted to actually Google something, I could go in and Google what is pi, and it would open it up a tab for me. Additionally, if I wanted to look at uh, uh, maybe something on Amazon, I need a calculator, so I can go Amazon and type in calculator, and it will pop it open in its own tab. If I wanted to do simple math as well, I can type it in, so three times five, and it will calculate the answer for me, and if when I press enter, it will then from there, uh, copy it into my clipboard to be pasted later with Command V. To wrap up, as you can see from this, I'm not perfect in using shortcuts all this time. Sometimes I do reach for the trackpad or the mouse when I could easily use a shortcut. It's a learning experience. So what I recommend is start small, start with a few of the different shortcuts, maybe the Command C, Command uh, V for copy paste, maybe moving your windows around, and slowly integrate this into your routine until you get more comfortable with using all these different shortcuts. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.